Hi everybody, uh, today's video is part of my series on Russian painters, which means I'm gonna butcher the names pretty bad, but bear with me on that. Uh, today's artist is Vladimir Fyodorovich Storzorov. Um, and he's my favorite Russian painter. He might be my favorite painter, period. Although I'll probably say the same thing on some upcoming artists I'm gonna be doing videos of also. So I have a lot of favorites, but I really love how he designed the canvas. Um, big, strong, solid shapes and values. And at the same time, very refined. Within those big shapes, he got a lot of work done without um, destroying it with detail. So uh, simple, but very refined. Also, very uh, varied as far as his subject matter goes. He used a, a lot of different uh, subject matter. So let's get started. And when I'm done, I'll come back and wrap things up and uh, give you a few takeaways. So stay tuned. Okay, Stazarov was born in 1926 in Moscow and died in 1973, so I uh, didn't live very long, 46, 47 years, but he did paint a lot. Um, it was said he painted 14, 16 hours a day, and during the solar nights up near the Arctic Circle, where you had months of uh, no nighttime, he would paint up to 20 hours. So, painted a lot, got a lot of work done, could have been why he passed away early. But after art school, which he started when he was a teenager, he went to art school in Moscow, the intermediate art school in Moscow from 1939 to 1945. And you would think that's enough, six months or six years, but no, he went uh, to another art institute in Moscow from 1945 to 1951. So Russian artists were well, well schooled, well trained. Um, and he painted uh, eventually up, up north, north country is what I read. I'm not sure where that is. I, to me, all of Russia is north country, but I guess they mean like in Siberia, up uh, near the Arctic Circle. Uh, more rural communities, uh, poorer farmers. Architecture was a little different, and he really liked being up there. It eventually moved up there to paint. But let's look at some of his work. A lot of varied subject matter. Here's a figure, an interior, and his work is just real solid compositionally, real solid values, uh, nice variation of color. So all his, I mean, you can just call this video the, the solid painter because everything was just uh, really well done. Um, and he did a lot of figures, a lot of landscape, a lot of interiors, a lot of still life. Uh, nice composition here. All these, and good composition has lines in it that lead you into the painting. And by lines, I don't necessarily mean just the lines on the floor, although they do lead you into the painting itself, back to the background. But a line is made up of any dark and light shapes together. So this shape here in the wood floor creates a line right there that leads you up the chair, up the figure. And there's just lines here that just wind around everywhere. And then eventually back out and you can go in several different ways here. So it really well composed, but not overly designed, but well composed. And what I like also is the simple masses and then also some areas of detail. And he combines that simplicity in some areas and then some areas where the detail is so that your eye doesn't just glaze over from detail everywhere. There's simple areas, kind of flat areas, where your eye can rest, you know, not a lot going on. And then there's areas with more detail, more interest, like pants, and the stuff over here, the flowers, that kind of draws you into the composition. And he does that a lot. And there's a lot of paintings here, so I'm going to kind of move through them, hopefully a little quicker than that. Um, it's the uh, villages, um, nice snow scene, real definite, distinct values. you got a light snow, dark snow, shadow, and then a half tone. There's no uh, fancy brushwork or um, different values kind of blending together too much. They're really set apart, which really makes his 
His subject's real solid, kind of heavy looking, real definite. And snow, when you paint snow, if you don't have three values in it, uh, it's not going to look three-dimensional. So he has, again, has the light area, the half tone, and the shadow, and that makes it three-dimensional. Just two, just the dark and the light would still be kind of flat. Uh, but he does a good do job of creating the depth. And then the variation within the half tone. There's subtle value changes in there. Not big ones, subtle, so it still holds together as a big shape. But that subtlety in the end there gives it more, again, more shape and more depth in that half tone area of the snow. But really strong values. Landscape here with a church and some buildings. And again, I like the, the variation he would get in these big solid shapes, like the shadow here on the, uh, on the church building, the grass on the ground. It's all one value, one shape, but there's subtle value and color changes within that shape. And that creates more interest. It's not just one flat value, although it reads as one big simple value. There's variation in there. So subtle value and subtle color change. Same thing with the grass. Two or three different greens, two or three different colors of green, and then real subtle value change. But everything's pretty much in the light value. It's not a bunch of little darks and lights which is what detail is. So again, the big, simple, flat areas make some of the more busier areas really stand out and draw your attention. Also did still lifes. Again, nice, big, simple shapes. Some areas are more detailed, like the pot, background, wall, a bit more detailed, but more flatter, um, less detailed areas like the um, tablecloth here, the fruit, the eggplant. Not much going on there. He reserves it for certain areas. And a lot of paint. He, I, don't, I don't think I've, of course I've never seen an original, but um, it doesn't look like there's any thin paint. He uh, didn't use much paint thinner or medium, doesn't look like. Another nice still life, a lot of good contrast between the darker objects and this light towel. Uh, a lot of his paintings, too, were very low-key in value. He keyed them very low, meaning the lights um, in his paintings weren't real light, didn't add a lot of white to them. So that means there's a lot of color to them. They're a little darker, like the light on the wall back in here, the light on the top of the table, the light on the bread, light on the red tablecloth there. They're light areas, but they don't have a lot of white in them. As a result, the color's stronger. Uh, richer, it doesn't get washed out by adding a lot of white to the light areas. So he's real careful, I think, to do that. Now there is some real light areas like the white town, the white bread, white tassels up there, but overall it's a, a low-key painting. So you can key your painting, make it uh, low-key. In other words, everything's a little darker but when you bring the lights down darker, like he's done here and here, you have to bring the shadows down darker also. You have to have the same value relationship. Just everything gets darker. Wouldn't work if you made the lights darker and kept the shadows a little lighter. Then he would lose his contrast. So, And you can have a high key painting where you add more white to your lights and more white to your shadows, uh, like a backlit painting is generally high key. But again, the lights will have more white, so you don't have as much color in there. So, color's a lot richer in a low key painting. Nice one here, again, kind of a low key painting that lights on the grass, somewhat on the building and areas, and half tone and shadows of the, or the half tone of the clouds, a lot darker. Not a lot of white in these lighter areas. Um, so as a result, there's more color in there. It's a rich, it's muted. It's not intense color, but it's a richer green in there and a richer whatever that is, some kind of uh, uh, orangey color. Very muted, but very orangey. And I don't think he had a large palette. Again, I'm guessing. I have no idea what he had on his palette. Uh, but it doesn't look like a wide range of colors. Everything um, is muted and he saves at the end 
or whenever he wants to put it, where the strongest color is going to be. In this case, it's the figures. Everything else is muted. If he's using kind of a, a three color or primary palette, everything has a little bit of red, yellow, blue in it. Like the grass here, probably more yellow and blue, but enough red to make it gray. Here it's more yellow and red with enough blue to make it grayer. Uh, so everything is muted with all three primaries, but one or two of the primaries stand out the most to give it you know, the, the local color. Or he could be using black, I don't know. Or some kind of uh, modifying color to, to gray everything. This one reminds me of a Levitan. I don't know if it's maybe because of those uh, fences here, those very Russian looking fences. Um, which I'm sure he saw a lot of Levitan's paintings. But again, a very high key. There's some real light values with a lot of white in some of it, but uh, all the, a lot of the lights are very dark and kept big and simple for the most part until you get to the background trees, the fence area. So variation or a nice balance of more muted areas and um, a little stronger color of busy areas and then flat, more simple areas makes it a lot easier to look at and follow. Also did a lot of figures. Um, figure here, get very simple. Clothes are kept real simple. Most details on the face and the, whatever that thing is. Um, I want to say xylophone, but I know it's not a xylophone. Also what I like about his paintings is he's not caught up with fancy brushwork. He doesn't care about uh, uh, flicking the brush or pulling the edges too much. Um, it's just good solid value changes and good solid shapes. So um, it's like, you know, he could paint it with a stick if he wanted to. He's not concerned about fancy technique. He just gets the paint down, the right value, the right shape, and then breaks up those big shapes where he wants to. Very well designed. Um, Pulls you in here. Let me get the brush. Pulls you in here and your eye just follows these lines of the fence up to the, all these lines created by the shadows and the rooftop. Again, any one shape and color and value into another shape of color and value creates a line. Like right in here, that's a line between whatever that is and the house. And that's what he uses here. You can, I can go straight up here, follow this line around. It just meanders all over really nicely. And when you can do that in a painting, it's going to work on some level. It's a nice one too, a bit more abstract. Got all these horizontal lines in here, uh, broken up nicely with these verticals. Some of them running all the way off, some of them not. And a really nice abstract painting and design there. and <clears throat> Nice patterns also, this pattern of white, or not white, light water against the dark poles. And then the pattern of the light buildings against the dark buildings. Again, yeah, I mean, your painting has a nice abstract feel to it, but it's still representational. It's still it's telling you a story, and that's a really good, good painting. In other words, there's not too much rendering. He doesn't over-render, which destroys the uh, kind of abstract feeling of the, of the design. This is a good, uh, nice example of the simplicity. You know, the, the haystacks, the yellow uh, field here, um, the roof, the sky, even the figures are just simple two or three values, not much going on in them. And that allows the busyness, just the detail of the skirt there, the detail of the hanging clothes, the windows back there, a little bit on the horse, allows that detail to stand out more, to become, to become more important. Uh, but if you over detailed everything, again, nothing would stand out. You could really pick the rooftops, get a lot of detail in there, a lot of small little value changes, but it would destroy this big overall design of those big shapes. And I like that everything is muted. Again, everything is grayed, either with complement or black or some kind of modifying color, except for a few places 
of clothes that really stand out. Beautiful painting. Another one here, this is also just a part of it. I didn't take any of the other parts. But um, again, these areas of kind of flatness, like the water back in here, um, the walkway or the bridge, some flat areas on the boats, kind of allow the more busy stuff to stand out. So picking and choosing what's going to be detailed and then being real conscious of where the more simple flat areas are going to be. So, <clears throat> so the viewer has a place to rest. <clears throat> also a lot of gray color everywhere except for a few places where it has some reds, oranges, greens, red here, the blue water, uh, everything else, well, red skirt there, everything else really muted to allow those areas to stand out more. Another big simple design, the dark water and dirt there, and then the light house and the light dock area there, light sky. So big simple value changes in there allows the focal point to stand out there. Very nice. I mean there's detail in the walkway here. There's subtle color changes. Uh, small darks and light or small dark accents to show between the boards. But not very much. He keeps it pretty simple. And I like these real dark shadows that uh, have nothing in them. They're just uh, maybe a little bit of subtle value change but kept real simple. Okay, another nice interior, this coffee maker, I guess, uh, with a stove type, a stove pipe. Kind of a strange, but really beautiful painting there. The, um, so I should have turned this into black and white so you could see the value changes, real definite value changes. Makes this look really solid, three-dimensional. Same thing with the cup, very simple, but Strong contrast, strong value, same thing with the wood. Those pieces of wood are real heavy, solid looking. And uh, just beautiful, beautiful gray colors. Again, really gray in here, grayish orange, gray stuff, kind of gray. And then the real strong blue, a lot of yellow, yellow oranges in there. So picking and choosing and making decisions on intensity. making it a definite choice. Another low key, how dark these lights are. Of course the lights are pretty light here, but nonetheless, overall it's a very low key painting. The lights on the trees are dark, lights back here, dark. even the sky for a light sky is somewhat dark. Um, also nice color harmony here. I again don't know his palette, but whatever color this is, some kind of real light uh, reddish orange, um, warm violet. It's got the same thing in the grass, same thing in the trees here, same thing in the background. Uh, added to these colors, added to the greens. Uh, so nice, nice color harmony there as well. Good suggestion of light. Last one here, another figure. Good patterns of dark and light with the snow and just the simplicity of the coats allows the face and the hands to really stand out and the just simple shapes of dark and light pattern in the snow and in the background uh, allows the story here to be more um, definite you know really speaks to you as opposed to getting way too detailed in the soldier's coat and the boy's coat too much detail in the background uh, simplifying always works better Okay, well, thanks for hanging with me through that. I really love looking at his work. His composition is so strong, and his values are so definite. There's no mushy indecision with his values. He's very direct. And again, uh, no fancy brushwork. You don't have to learn tricky brush techniques to paint well. Uh, one of the takeaways um, from seeing his work is to be more varied with your subject matter. Don't get stuck with just one topic all the time. I think painting different things kind of broadens your uh, experience of, of different things to paint, different colors to mix, and can only make you a better painter. You don't want to get stuck just painting one thing all the time. Uh, that kind of, kind of 
stalls out your progression, I think, as an artist. So um, check out my next video on Konstantin Korovan, another uh, Russian artist in this series. If you would like uh, more artist tips, you can sign up for my free newsletter and check out the link below in the notes uh, to sign up for that. Um, and if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. See you next time.